Well, happier when they have something called realistic adversity. No, relational diversity. I don't know what I'm saying here. <laughs> right. I don't th was that word even supposed to, that sentence supposed to be there? No, I think we lost a sentence there. But that's the topic that we're talking about today. Relational <laughs> diversity. Actually, it's very interesting. It's a study it, at, at the Harvard School of Business that, right. that took a look at this. And it, you should talk to strangers. Well, no stranger to us. The study said if you talk to strangers, it actually makes you happier. Christine Whelan from the UW-Madison, our happiness expert, is here to explain. Sorry about that. <laughs> none of, none of, of those words made sense to me. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, at least we're not, to, we're, we're not talking to strangers. We're talking among friends. And even yes. if you were, see, those are the kinds of things that will be a conversation opener. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we said in the, in the bump coming in, your mother said, don't talk to strangers. That's right. Well, that, that was the old adage. But in this case, when you talk to strangers, when you go to the dry cleaners, when you go to the grocery store when you're walking your dog on the street if you say hello to people and just make some small talk it turns out that makes you happier does it freak other people out well okay so I am a born and raised New Yorker <laughs> and uh, and New Yorkers have this this image right that we don't that we look down and we're always never smiling kind of thing but I got to tell you I, I learned to talk to strangers in the city because you can actually create uh, sort of small communities within larger ones when you get to know the people you see on a regular basis mm -hmm. and certainly when we are at work we see people in person uh, when we are uh, in our communities we do but the more we isolate, turns out the less happier we are. Oh, well, that's interesting. And I think we're social creatures. People mm -hmm. are social creatures. And post-pandemic, a lot of people are seeking those kinds of connections. But is this challenging if you're an introvert? So the, the, the research on extroverts and happiness versus introverts and happiness is a little bit complex because the measures for happiness often measure how much you socialize, which of course extroverts do more often than introverts. So then extroverts tend to score higher and seem happier. Now there's a sort of quiet happiness that introverts get that perhaps extroverts don't get if they're always out in the open. And yet at the same time, talking to people is a human evolutionary reaction. We are social creatures. Isolation is fatal. So having those relationships, they don't have to be deep heart to hearts, but just connecting with another human being that really does bring us happiness and energy. I was going to say, it doesn't have to be a conversation that you're going to be best friends for life. It's just small talk. Absolutely. You know? Small talk. And then if I have a little small talk conversation with you one week and then I see you the next week, I might pick up and, you know, how's the sports team that we talked about? How are, you know, you mentioned this. And those kinds of things really tend to build relationships over time. There's research that shows that there's a lot of power in loose ties. We often think about the people that we know best as the ones who will help us get jobs and make other connections. But it turns out that the people on the, on the, the outer edges of our circle, those are the ones that really can help us expand our horizons. Thus, talk to strangers. And that's what the study <laughs> looked at. They looked at who you talk to and how often you talk to them. Exactly. Right? right. So you want to talk to a, a large group of people if you can. I mean, not too large, but you know, you want to talk to s uh, some people, at least, you know, five or six people a day if you can. And then you want to talk to them at various degrees of depth and uh, emotional resonance. So you don't have to tell your life story to everybody. You can have a sort of superficial conversation with somebody. And then as long as you have one person that you can really confide in, the research on depression shows that that actually is a, a way to uh, prevent depression and isolation. So just having that one person for the deep stuff is really all we need. I'll tell you what helps a lot is to have a dog or two. Mm, and I walk the dogs at, conversations. And every day I see the neighbors and we pick up a little conversation, mm -hmm. talk a little bit about something and then move along and pick it up next time. Absolutely. Yeah. Dogs, children. Children are also very <laughs> useful walk your children. for this. Yes, I can walk my children, but I can also make friends with the, pa the parents of my children's friends as they as they go along through school. So all of these are ways to kind of break the social ice, so to speak. Very interesting. That's feel good. Yeah. All right, Christine, interesting stuff as usual. Thank you. Great to be here. Don't be a stranger. Thanks for rolling with it. <laughs> Always.